we have a beautiful sunny day a little breezy first of November I'm getting ready to kind of prepare the uh, chicken coop for winter so this is the first year I've done this I kind of do the deep litter method but I clean it out in the spring and in the fall so this year I'm just gonna clean it out in the spring here's a couple nesting boxes Got a couple of, a couple of eggs there this is just uh, what has built up over since spring um, and I just use um, the pine shavings so I'm gonna put another layer another bag of pine shavings in here and uh, then we'll move on from there also I keep the rabbit food and the hay for the rabbits in here during the summer because the rabbits live right there in the summertime so I will be taking those two cans over to their winter home which is that little red shed right there you really don't have to move rabbits indoors for the winter time but we started them out in there and we've got Quite a bit of money tied up in their cages in there and they're super nice and I just hate not to use it so we just move them in there in the winter time I've got to get that cleaned out also but first we're gonna do the chicken coop so I'm gonna get these pine shavings well hello these pine shavings in there and uh then I'll be back all right so I got the pine shavings in here I usually like the I think it's called flake but they were out so all I could get was the fine I'll probably put another bag of flake on top of this in a couple weeks the flake holds up longer so um, anyway I got that done now for the windows um, this has uh, the hardware cloth um, on both of these I had um, been using just plastic to cover which worked fine it was just you had staples to deal with you know when the weather warmed up to pull out and everything so I built some wooden like a shutter I was that's why these hinges are there I was just gonna hinge them to where I could open them and close them easier but I didn't think that through and it made it so dark in here so they're laying here on the floor <laughs> so I'm just gonna go back to plastic until um, I had thought about building a frame and putting the plastic on the frame so that the frame could either hinge open and close or I could just remove it but the plastic would still be on there and I wouldn't have to rip it off and you know put new plastic up every year so that's what I'm probably I'm probably just gonna put plastic up and and then when I get time maybe this winter sometime um, build a frame to keep the plastic on so that's what I'm getting ready to do next is just put the plastic up
Oh, let me show you what I'm getting ready to do. I've been talking with, I think her name's Angela, but I could not swear to it. She's from Tall Weeds and Rust. She spoke at the Stivers Harvest Celebration. And I contacted her about my um, new layer chickens. I mean, they're getting pretty good size. Let me take you in and let you see closer. Um, hi, girls. I don't have any treats for you. That's what they're... That's what they're thinking. But there's my three. They're pitiful looking. They're molting. But it's hard to see them. But anyway. Hi, pretty girl. Maddie, you need to go. This is... A chicken killer cute little foo-foo looking dog she's not she killed one of my chickens so when she comes around I tell her to get I don't know if there's any train in her she's nine or ten years old but anyway, these girls are getting pretty good size. I think they're, let's see, they're 13 or 14 weeks old. And this is a sapphire gem. And then I have two of those. And then I have two um, Americana. I'm pretty sure that's what these are. That one and that one back there. And then I have the two Bard Rock. And I started out with the Issa Browns, which is what those are. Anyways, I need to... The, the weather's cooling off. They really don't have, like, a place to, to roost. I mean, like, for at night because the only cover they have is that down there. So they have an open area back under there. And then I put this where they can get inside of there. But I just want them, I don't know, I just want them to be in their home for the winter. So I've been talking to um, Tall Weeds and Rust and I was trying to get this chicken tractor as close. Let me back up as close to I'm sorry I know y'all think I have treats not not right now so I was trying to get it as close but I have to pull it with the with our mule and I can't I can't get it any closer than this I'm gonna try to drive it out and around and straight up and I'm hoping it'll fit right through there so that they can be right this side can be alongside of the end of that uh, run so that they can be closer for the next few weeks um she had suggested that i section off the run and it's just it's not you know that big and then only let's see i guess about half of it is covered but i don't know she suggested um splitting the run up i just didn't know how i was going to do it so i thought the next best thing would be to pull their chicken tractor hey i don't have any treats I don't have any treats. Don't peck me. 
Don't peck me. It's okay. <laughs> Don't peck me. <laughs> so, I thought I would just try to put the run. I mean, it's going to be close whether I can get it through there or not. But I think I can. I'm just going to have to pull it out and around and then come straight through here. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull them up next to there. I'm going to just try and let them get used to each other. And then as often as I can, because I don't let mine free range anymore um, without me out here since my mom's dog killed one of my chickens. I mean, I used to let them out and they would stay right around here. Speak of the devil. Um, but anyway, they used to just stay right around here and free range and um, then they would just put themselves up and then I could come and just shut the door. Um, but um, now I have to be out here and with the weather you know cooling off so much I'm not really I'm not really out here like hours and hours you know at, at one time I'm gonna be when I start cleaning out this garden area but you girls are just so pretty you're just so pretty We haven't named these girls yet. I never named my other ones because I couldn't tell them apart at all. Um, and these, I have two of each, so I'm hoping I can, definitely the Americanas I can tell apart. But the, the other two, one of them's, um, uh, whatever you call that, waddle is, a lot lighter than the other one. I was wondering if that was some kind of deficiency or if that's just how they are. But hers is not near as red as hers. But, um, and then these, these two, when they were chicks, the, uh, Sapphire Gems, when they were chicks, um, one of them was way darker than the other one. And I'm assuming, I think one of them's head is darker than the other one. But the only one that has a name is, where'd she go? That one. Her name is Ruthie. She was such a friendly chick. She always came running. I mean, from the time she was, you know, three days old. And uh, my granddaughter, whoa, my granddaughter wanted to call her friendly. And my daughter looked up, I don't know, something on online and said that Ruth meant friendly. So we're calling her Ruthie. So that's Ruthie. And then one of my grandsons named one of the sapphire gems, I think. Or it might have been the other Americana. Uh, Drift. I'll have to ask him. But Drift and Ruthie are the two names that we've gotten so far. So if you have any good... Um, chicken names I'd love to hear them I guess that's all that I've got going on right now other than I gotta clean out that red shed Ugh, I'm not looking forward to that either what you doing there girly are you digging digging for bugs at Maddie get Go on. Go on. I'm sorry. Go. This 
is their uh, chicken feeder I built, or I didn't build it, I was going to, but Perry ended up doing it for me. And it's great because I can put a whole bag of feed in there. And uh, I need to make a couple more holes for them to eat, but they just stick their head in there. There's no waste. It's awesome. I have it on a, like a concrete block to raise it up. I just put new straw in their run. It gets so muddy. We are on a hill. I don't know if you can tell. But it's kind of on a hill. And water just runs down through here. And this gets so muddy. And their poor little feet. I just like to keep something down. And uh. I've, uh, the wood shavings break down really super fast. So, I've, this is, um, like the best, best thing I've found to use for my situation. And they get in here and dig and I guess it helps as it breaks down. There's worms and stuff in the dirt. But, um, oh, another thing that I do, I don't have it hooked up yet. I guess I'll do that today, too, is uh, I use this, um, I think it's for horses. I started off using um, a water for dogs that uh, you plug in, and it keeps the water from freezing. Oh, my gosh, it is a lifesaver. This one is for horses. It's a big bucket and it's it's electric and I just set it on a couple of bricks and I run a cord over here underneath the the coop and plug it in and uh, oh my gosh I think we've used it for the last two years and it is a lifesaver just the little bit I've been in there messing around they're already digging and scratching and taking a dust bath one of them was drinking out of the waterer here which it's kind of tall so I have to put stuff for them to climb on around it um, I just have a big I guess I'll have to go inside to see it I brought a big uh, slice of wood that I had as a stepping stone in the garden in for them to stand on. It's got a bunch of dirt on top of it, but I thought I'd let them pick through the bugs that were on there before I clean it off. But it helps them to reach the water. Plus it gives the bucket some stability. And they're in here taking a dust bath and messing around. Poor little things, they look terrible. They're molting. Easy. Be sweet. So, I'm getting ready to pull the chicken tractor over there between the garden and the chicken run and see how they so how, see how they do okay so I moved the chicken tractor to the end of the chicken run they are I don't know six or eight inches away big enough for Ellie to squeeze in between <laughs> she's already been through there a couple of times she loves her chickens now you can keep an eye on both sets of chicks huh <laughs> anyway I plan on leaving them here for I don't know 
maybe three, four weeks. And hopefully in that time I can get them out free ranging together. Maybe after they've been here, maybe a week looking at each other. And then when I put them together, I will bring them in at night once they've all went in to roost for the night. And then I'll make sure I come back out early the next morning to make sure they're getting along okay. But, um, I got the, the covers on the windows, the tractor moved, um, got their heated water set up. Okay, so I got my windows covered, that one. And this one and it still lets light in and it'll keep the wind down and the rain from coming in blowing in so something I do different than I feel like most people do most people I see have their food and water inside the chicken coop I don't um, just because they're outside most of the time. They're usually in here to sleep and lay an egg. Look, I got one already, already up there. It's early, honey. It's kind of turned into a gray day, so. I guess they feel like it's late. Are you trying to get up there too? Wow, your crop is full. <laughs> um, so I'm glad to get the um, windows covered. The cold weather is coming in this week. Um, I'm hoping it warms up again, but for right now, um, don't you do it. <laughs> for right now um it's getting cold i mean um i think i saw 22 one night maybe tomorrow night um i think tonight it's gonna get down to like 32 um so i just wanted to get their windows covered um and get their heated water in. I don't have it hooked up yet because I think Perry's gonna mow one more time if we if we get uh, some good enough weather. Um, and I didn't want the cord um, going across the yard, so. So I'll show you what I did. I don't know if it's too windy outside, but we'll try. Hi, Ellie Mae. Got a tarp on their chicken tractor because it was calling for cold and rainy and all they have is underneath that uh, roofing right there or they can get inside that dog house but um, this allows them to be able to just use the whole thing if they want to so this way they are super close so they can like just get used to each other and then I'll get out here and free range with, with them while I'm out here but yeah I'm excited to get them together but it's one thing you got to do kind of slowly and uh one step at a time so 
anyway it was a couple of things I was glad to get done is uh, the tarp on the chicken tractor and the uh, I gotta get this mess cleaned up the uh, water the electric water and I will hook it up we run that cord over there to that white building and uh, that stays uh, thought out for them and it makes my life so much easier and their food is in in that I got that idea from Kevin from Living Traditions. He built, his is a lot bigger, but I didn't need anything that big, so I just downsized it. And uh, Perry actually built it. I was going to, but he just did, so. I had bought all the stuff for it, and he just went and ran with it. Well, I'm back in the house where I am canning baked beans and making chicken and dumplings. We've been trying to eat healthy, but it's such a nasty, drizzly day. Just had a hankering for some chicken and dumplings. So I got my dumplings made. And they're... I like to let them dry out a little bit before I drop them in the broth. Helps them hold up better. Got my baked beans out of the canner. And got a nice fire going. Because it's getting cold. Well, I'm so glad I got all that done today. Um, and I'm really glad I thought of the tarp for the chicken tractor. I think they'll be way more comfortable and uh, less chance of them getting wet and cold. So I've got a nice bowl of uh, chicken and dumplings over there waiting for me and uh, I'm gonna go have my supper. So thanks for hanging out with me today while I did some things on the chicken coop and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Gotta love some chicken and dumplings.